My name is Chris Bedan, and I wanted to show you how I went about writing and recording the drum parts for this song that I'm working on. I know the title says program and write drums faster with this. What is this? Well, it's this. It's all it is. My inexpensive LOL MIDI keyboard. For those of you who have been following me for a little while know that I used to have like a pretty big, I forget what it was, um, I'll, sh I'll show it. But so anyways, what I have here is I have a little, um, if I was to use the old session or the session of the actual song that I'm working on, It'll be too big, there's too much latency. What, so what I did was, is I just kind of re-recorded these riffs um, using you know, the Neural DSP archetype Nolly. And then I also used um, the Dark Glass Bass. <clears throat> but it's a very stripped down version of everything. So I don't have really much going on in the master, nothing on the drum bus, very minimal things going on. Just getting rid of the things that I don't like on the kick. But like I said, the main thing here is to kind of show you how I went about writing these drum parts. The way that I went about it was I actually wrote the guitar riffs first. It actually was just uh, this, I'll show you here. Then I doubled it, of course, left and right, you'll see here. Then I did the bass, not much processing on the bass, again, just to keep the latency low so I can kind of demonstrate this. Added the lead in there. And that reverb sound that you're hearing is just the stock reverb, uh, pretty fast decay time. And then I routed it to there using this A and B thing that I've talked about in my previous videos. So I wrote this riff, just kind of came out. I wish I could explain to you. I, I think that's a, one of the biggest reasons why I think people can't really explain how they wrote the riff because a lot of it just kind of, it just happens. Now, one thing that I, if I could try and um, convey writing riffs for me anyways is, is rhythm is a big factor. And another thing is, is trying to, to write things out of my comfort zone a little bit, which is kind of what I'm doing now. However, I'm actually practicing guitar a little bit more, so I'm starting to learn more things about it. Anyway, so I wrote the riff, and I really just kind of listened to it after, and it's just like, okay, what do I, how can I make this, you know, technical on the drums as well? And I think that's all kind of what we're doing if you're write, trying to write music like this. Now, one thing that I started with was the kick. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna record the kick first. and I could show you, I actually have this routed out on the MIDI keyboard. I have it here on B and C. You just have kicks. And then here, right next to it, you can see. And if you watch a few of my videos, you'll see um, my original keyboard drum video I actually have, it's pretty, it's laid out pretty much the same. Like I said in the other video, it changes here. But, I mean, you can kind of see I have, uh, I'll just kind of hit all the keys so you can hear. It's pretty much everything that I have going. So I used to play keyboard drums and, you know, it was fun, but again, I couldn't get as, te as technical as I would like the song to be on drums and stuff like that. So. 
Let me show you how I started off this riff idea. Turn on the click here and then we'll run this. And I'll just literally, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play the kick first, but I'm gonna use a double kick just so I can get the uh, and this may take a little bit of practice, but it'll be worth it, I promise you, because um, you'll be able to uh, pump out some really cool technical sounding drums. Now, one key thing is to, to think about the four limbs thing, you know, how many things can uh, the drummer do in real life? Because, you know, chances are maybe you'll want to try and play this live or with a band, you know. Um, and so think about that while you're here. You know, you can't be doing other things because you're, you know, just... I would say analyze drummers because that's the best way to figure this all out. But anyways, let me show you. Okay, so I have the kick written. First thing I do, come in here, select all, and quantize. In Ableton, you quantize with command U. So now, if we listen back, now we have the kick. And that's super important. One, one thing that I would say is not important right now is velocities. We're just kind of sketching it out right now. We can go off and refine it later. So I have the kick down. Now with Ableton, what's cool is, is you can actually um, add on to your existing MIDI clip. So the next thing that I'll add is we'll add open hi-hat. We'll add an opening uh, splash here with the two crashes followed by hi-hat just kind of riding out. So I'll click this here. So now that that's done, command U since it's already selected, quantizes it. So then we can listen back. That might be cool as like an intro or something. Um, this is kind of what happens when you're experimenting. You'll get these little like light bulb moments. You're like, oh, that might be pretty cool in the beginning. Or that might be cool on the bridge or whatever, you know? And don't discount anything. Because I know I did. And, you know, take it from experience of just experiment. That's what it is. Like, experiment. Try things. Make sure you try it before you discount it. Because what if you hear it in your head and you're like, ah, oh, it's not cool. You don't know that until you put it in there and then listen back as a spectator. So next, let's put in the snare. Hitting this button up here, like I said. Okay quantize again because you see that I was a little late or, or a little early on one. It's okay. That's what quantize is for. Make sure it quantized. Let's try it again. Okay, quantize that one. Okay. So now we have our part written and we can stop there, but what's cool about having that little foundation now is we can go in and add, you know, little things. We can listen back and be like, oh, you know, a symbol will sound really cool there. Or, you know, um, this is where that experimentation thing comes into play again. So 
So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of a symbol right there. So this here, you can see, we can listen back. I want to add one other one there, so I'll just come up here. And a lot of this is just kind of like, let's just see if it works. Just try it. You're going to get these little like rushes of, of just ideas. Oh, maybe I should try this. Try it. Don't just discount it. Try it first. Right? And you can see me kind of well in my hands because you can kind of visualize a drummer like hitting that. I, I usually always think about Troy, right? Because he's like one of my favorite drummers. And you know, that might be something cool to think about as well. Like, uh, to be completely honest, this song, um, I was kind of going for a certain sound um, in the heavier part. Um, and I was thinking, hmm, one of, another one of my favorite drummers is Nathan Bula from Auras and Intervals. And I was thinking, what would he do here? And so I went off and, and listened to a little bit of his stuff. And I was like, okay, he likes to do this. He likes to do that there, you know? And so what I did was, is I tried to think as if I was him and, and added his little parts, you know? Um, and that's kind of another thing that I like to do. I just started doing, which helped me get out of my little rut was, um, for those of you who know, um, I actually do graphic design and videography and stuff like that. One of the things in graphic designs is creating sort of a, a mood board. And so, you know, that is like, let's say we're, we're making a logo and we'll, you know, we'll find different logo inspirations. We'll find different fonts that we like and we'll put it onto this thing. Well, like I said, that was kind of one of the things that I ended up doing was like, oh, well, I want it to sound like these bands that I've been listening to. And I want uh, a few of my parts to sound like Nate Bullet played drums on them. And so that's kind of where I got this foundation from. Okay, so I have another part we can do it on just to kind of experiment so I can show you guys again. Um, and it's kind of like the chorus. So for this part, um, I was inspired by I don't remember who I was inspired by, probably like C2A or something, because it kind of reminds me of C2A when I hear it. Um, I got, that's how I kind of thought of the idea and got the idea to kind of like write something like that. Now I wanted to write drums to it. And typically when I think about writing drums to part like parts like this is think about the rhythm and have the kick follow the rhythm, because that's usually what happens in uh, progressive type music like this. So if you listen to this riff here, So what I can do is, you can even see in the waveforms, I can follow this with the kick and at least put that foundation down. And then if I want to add or delete, I can after the fact, after I have these initial hits going on. So let's do that real quick. So you can hear I did it two different ways. It was two bars of that, but I did it two different ways. Um, that was honestly unintentional, but it can give you kind of some variation if you did want to use both of those. So I'll select them all by hitting Command A, Command U to quantize everything. So now we have the kick. Then we'll do, um, this time we're gonna do some symbols. We're gonna do the crashes. So I'll start with left and right crash, and then I'll just ride on one.
Okay. So now I have that. I'm gonna quantize that. Make sure this one's quantized. Sometimes it doesn't, okay. Sometimes it'll fail because my timing is bad. So then, you know, we could just come in and make sure you can kind of see already that some of them didn't completely line up. So you just go off and fix it. Okay, so this one I need to bring over just a little bit. I'm actually gonna change this. Okay, now that that's fixed, I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with the snare. Okay, so I remember in my uh, original video, I actually messed with the snares a little bit. So I changed this one and moved it over a little bit. And this is the part of the experimentation that I'm telling you about. Just try different things, because what do you have to lose? Nothing, nothing at all. Well, the worst thing you have to do is Command Z or you know put the snare back, because it's not as cool. Sweet. So if you wanted to add um, some fills here and there, um, one thing that I would do is um, every once in a while, I think for the song previous to this one, I did um, a few riffs this way. And what I did was, is I literally just recorded, you know, and then I put them in there. And that's literally. or anything. And so another way you can do it is just kind of figure out where you want it, figure out where you want that fill. Right here. I want the, I want the um, fill to kind of do So we'll just program that in. Okay, so that's programmed in. Now again, when you're writing these things out, since you're just kind of sketching out with Think about sketching out with just, you know, uh, a pencil. And so you're just trying to get it down, the idea down. And then you can go off and in this case, refine the velocities and, you know, make it sound like it's, you know, actually a drummer playing. So then you can go off and, you know, adjust these here. And then you can, like I said, just adjust it so it sounds like a real drummer is playing it. And that may take a little bit of research on, you know, um, how hard drummers hit if they're doing like a roll. Um, they're not always hitting like ta 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 ta, like always the same in velocity. And so that may be something that um, you can experiment with. Uh, now I do have a little bit of an older video explaining velocities and how you can go about, you know, getting your velocities to sound a little bit more realistic. Um, 
which I'd like to make an updated video of that. I may do that at some point soon, um, just explaining um, the things that I've learned and because I've had experience playing drums now and I know and f have felt these things. And so um, I definitely would like to make an updated video with that. But um, going back to this, this is kind of how I went about writing um, all the parts for that riff. And, um, you know, some may think that this is cheating, this and that, but, you know, not all of us know how to play the drums and, and are, you know, extremely good at drums. And uh, believe it or not, that's kind of something that limited me from wanting to write parts like this because I was like, well, I can't play these on the real drums, so why should I write, why would I write parts like this? And so it's just like, no, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Um, just write what comes out, you know what I mean? Write what comes out and think about all that stuff later uh, because there is some super technical stuff out there to where you're just like, is that even possible? I don't know, maybe. Then you watch drummers like Naveen Copperweiss and you watch drummers like Matt Gartska and all these crazy guys. Um, and it is. However, you can think about that stuff later. Um, right now you're just writing, you're having a good time. Um, you want to write cool stuff like you hear, you know, your favorite bands doing. Think about what they're doing and how you can kind of bring it into your style too, because that's another thing. Like, you know, we can try and be original and all this and that. And I think that ca that naturally comes out with the way that you write and your writing style. Um, it just naturally comes out. Every time that I show someone um, songs that I've made, they're always like, it sounds like you, man. And I'm just like, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know how that is. But it's, all of us have it, you know, and so just worry about trying to make it sound cool. But if you run out of ideas, like I said, gather references and a mood board and things you're like, oh, I wanted to, I want, maybe I could try and do that. Or maybe, you know, I could do this or, or, you know, maybe I can add some synths or whatever. And maybe that has to be another video that I can come out with because a lot of people have been asking me about, you know, the synths that I use on this and it was nothing but some, some, stock stuff, but it was the approach and how, how it was layered into that, uh, into that song. And so I can go off and, uh, maybe I'll make a video about that soon, but, um, a little bit of a quicker video. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how I went about doing that because I know that that's something that I've struggled with and I still continue to struggle with. However, that I realize that the only struggle is the limit in my mind. And so this has kind of opened up some doors for me. Um, to kind of have some more things, uh, some more armor to, um, or some more ammo to um, pull out when I'm struggling or if I can't think of things to do, um, I will do this because it's like, yeah, I want some tech stuff and this is how I go about doing it anyways. But again, uh, my name is Chris Badan. This is how I went about writing uh, the drums on that part. If you have any questions, um, you can always hit me up on my Instagram at chris.badan. Um, you can hit me up on uh, the in here on the comments section. Um, I try to answer every single one and um, Yeah, let me know if this helps guys. Uh, I'd like to be able to you know um, Dive further into things that you guys are struggling with because I know that I Have or still currently am which is why it took me so long to write or to make a video like this because I couldn't write anything um, which you know, maybe I need to come out with a video talking about the, the, the mind game that, it, that happens with me. And maybe it'll help some of you guys too. But um, again, I hope that helped. Let me know if you have questions. And I hope you guys, that you, I hope you guys have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.